Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, welcome to the part 4 of the tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to um, get the message from the Facebook page and how to send message back to the user. Okay, um, let's go to developers.facebook.com and then select your application. Um, mine is called Image Resizer and then go to the messenger section. Uh, on our last tutorial, we have already added um, the webhook um, and also make sure that webhook is up and running. For me, it's up and running here and it's all good. Okay. Um, now, the first thing I want to do is I want to select my page. Um, so my page is called test page one. Let me select that. All right. I got the access token here. I will um, put the access token on my code editor. And the other thing I want to do is I want to subscribe to some of the events for the webhook. Um, for now, we will only subscribe to the messages. We want to get notified on the webhook whenever there's like a message on the page. That's it, okay? Uh, make sure you do that, select the message and click save. Um, my bot uh, lives on test page one. Um, so what you have to do is you have to select the page and click subscribe. In my case, I've already subscribed. Um, so it's all good. Um, now let's um, go back to our page and see if we get any events on on the webhook. All right, so if I say hi, um, let's go back to the terminal. I get 405. That means myth are not allowed. Um, as you guys remember, we have only allowed um, get on our webhook. So let's add the post uh, method as well. Okay. Um, and then see if that works. Um, and let's print out whatever we get from the Facebook just to see uh, what it looks like and what, what can we do about it. Okay. And also we want to return 200 back. Otherwise flux will return some sort of error. Um, so now if I do hi, um, that took a while for me, about uh, 30 seconds or so, um, but we have the data. Um, so let's uh, copy that data in the code editor and see what do we get from Facebook, okay? Um, all right, so, um, so the object is page because this is a request from the, uh, because the message was from on the page. Um, and there's ID, this is a application ID, and this is a timestamp. And the thing we, we uh, the thing that is most interest, interesting to us is messaging, okay? So the first thing is sender ID. This is actually the user ID of the page. So it is also called page scope user ID. We need this user ID in order to send message to the user. Recipient, this is like our application ID. Um, we don't need to worry about that and this is again a timestamp and a message um, so every messages will have like a unique ID and also the message associated with it uh, in this case it's a text um, so we get hi back all right now um, let's try the code to you know um, do something about it um, before we do that uh, if you guys don't get a event, um, it might be because you might have restarted Angie Rock. So Angie, whenever you use a free version of the Angie Rock, uh, every time you restart the server, it will um, the URL will be different. So make sure um, you know you still have access to the to the URL that you you were using before. Um, otherwise, just go to the webhook section and then quickly change the URL, okay? Um, all right, so, and another thing is, if we look at the Facebook event, it's a byte, it's not a JSON, so we, we have to convert that into a JSON. I have already imported JSON here, and what I'll do now is I will convert that into a JSON. All right, that's good. Um, and let's grab the messaging events because that's the most important 
piece of information. And if you look at the messaging events, they, this is a list. Um, and they, they can be uh, multiple messaging events um, in one single request according to Facebook. So it's always a good idea to loop through all the messaging events. We are going to do just that. And now let's grab the user ID first. And also let's grab the text input. Um, there might or might not be text. For example, if user sends uh, an image to the uh, to the page, there might not be a text. So, and we don't want our um, code to fail. So that's why I have put a get in here. And now let's print it out flat in the terminal to see everything is good. All right, message from user ID. Okay, let's go back to the page and say hi. All right, there we go. We have the user ID um, and we have the user input. All right, let's do some smart things about it. Um, now, now the next step for us is to send a message back to the user and for that we are going to use, um, you, you guys might have heard about it, it's a Facebook Graph API, messages. Um, so if we look at this, um, this is the URL that we need to send a request with the page access token. Remember we grabbed the page access token earlier. And this is the example of the payload that we have to send. Um, so the first thing is the recipient. This is a user ID. Um, by PSID, they mean a page scope user ID. And this is uh, whatever you want to send back to the user. And the other important thing is messaging type. Um, so messaging type is uh, defines like what kind of message are you sending to the user? Is it just like a you know, is it just a response? Is it an update or is it like a um, like a push notification or something? So in our case, is it it is just a response back to the user? So it will be response. Later when we build other sophisticated app like sending push notification or sending reminder, then we might have to use another message tag. But for now, response will just be fine. Let's jump um, into writing the code. Uh, I just want to copy this so that it's easier to um, follow. Um, instead of um, putting everything in application.py, app.py, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another file called bot.py, bot.py. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a class called bot. Um, and then this bot class will require two parameters, access token and access token and Facebook URL. So if if someone doesn't supply Facebook URL then we'll just use our default and access token access token because we want this access token to be available on the class method and we'll do the same thing for the URL. API URL. Good. Um, and let's create a method that will actually send a text message back to the user. Okay. Um, PSID, by PSID I mean the page scope user ID um, and the actual text message and also messaging type. Um, 
if if the caller of this method doesn't specify messaging type then the default will be response now um, we are going to use Python request to send an API request to Facebook if you guys have been using Python for some time and have been interacting with third-party APIs then you you might be familiar with Python request we have not install Python requests on our virtual environment so I am going to do that first all right so so if we look at this um, curl request here um, the content type has to be application JSON we are going to send that as a header Uh, the data should consist of three three things messaging type recipient and the message we are going to let's construct a dictionary for that okay and the parameters would be um, access token um, and the URL is we need to add uh, messages um, path to the URL so let's call it um, URL plus messages all right now let's send a request This has to be a post request. Um, this is the URL. Um, this is the headers. Uh, we will send the data in a JSON format, of course. Um, let me import JSON really quickly. Thumbs data. All right. Um, for now let's print it out to oh actually I forgot adding parameters because we must send our access token and now let's response the content all right it's all good now what we can do is we can um, test this class to make sure it works um, so what what I want you to do is um, grab the page access token because while calling the class we need the page access token um, oh that's spring yep um, and then let's try sending a message and other thing i want you to grab is go back to your terminal if you um, have it uh, you, you must have it running and grab the user id it should be on the sender id um, it can just be an teaser and the message for now testing all right let's try running it to see if it works an active access token must be used oh actually we we created the parameters but we forgot to add the um, access token in here sorry about that guys All right, now let's try running it again. Good. Now it should be you should be getting a message on your page. Bravo. Good. Now what import from bot? Import the bot. Um, you might want to initialize the bot in here. So, um, text. 
token and what we want to for now we will just send uh, the same thing testing um, this is the user ID the message would be test okay make sure everything is up and running all right looks okay now if I see all right here we go guys nice now let's make our bot a bit intelligent okay um let's create a list with a set of greetings keyword um hi hello how do you And let's add a bit of a logic in there saying um, if text input in greetings um, we want to say hi back to the user um, otherwise um, we just want the res response text to be I'm still learning Let's see if that works. Yay, here we go. If I say hello. Yep. But if I say something that the bot doesn't understand, it will say I'm still learning. All right, perfect guys. Um, so this is it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to learn how to modify the webhook to accept the image um, and then we'll also write a logic to um, to do the image resize and send the image back to the user all right see you in the next one